tutti, bentornati sulla Pomp. Per l'intervista di oggi dobbiamo ringraziare Riccardo Cappelli per la sua disponibilità e per l'organizzazione. Il chitarrista che abbiamo intervistato è il primo chitarrista rock di questa serie di interviste che stiamo pubblicando ed è un grandissimo punto di riferimento per tutti gli amanti del genere. Lui si chiama Paul Gilbert. Durante la nostra chiacchierata abbiamo parlato principalmente di questo album del 2021 in cui Paul registra tutte le parti di tutti gli strumenti ed è proprio da qui che siamo partiti per la prima domanda. Da dove nascevano le idee che poi venivano sviluppate per diventare i brani che abbiamo ascoltato? I think uh, mostly two things. The, sometimes I have uh, lyrics and uh, that can be the easiest way because it, for example um, that I have an ar- argument about pie mm-hmm. and uh, so I, I had that, that lyric which I thought was funny and then I, you know, I just played a chord and started singing you can never get in an argument about pie mm-hmm. and uh, that, that melody really f- flowed out it was, okay. you know, it was nice when you just have inspiration and uh, it, uh, it was a very long melody and I wasn't sure when to end it <laughs> you know it's like how long should it go and, and finally it, I just sort of ran out of ideas and I just let it stop there and uh, and it's, it's kind of a like the chords are, are a little more tricky than I normally do yeah and uh, and it's kind of a you know, sometimes if you have sophisticated chords it's hard to make it a heavy song yes yeah. like a heavy song is usually better with very simple chords yeah um But I wanted it to be a little bit more powerful, so uh, I, I played, uh, ended up doing most of the melody on slide guitar, or sometimes playing with, with regular fingers, and uh, I, because I was playing all the instruments myself, mm-hmm. you know, I always had to use a click track as the, as the main reference. So it, uh, you know, for the demo, I can just play, you know, the, the, the demo doesn't have to be perfect, so yes, I, yes. Can, I can do a very rough demo. Um, but really, I usually I don't have time to make a demo. Like I, you know, I'm a, a dad and a, and a husband, yes, and yeah. you know I have a lot of I have to wash the dishes and stuff. So um, <laughs> yeah, I usually don't have time to make demos. So most, usually it's just in my head. And uh, then in the studio, I'll I'll, I'll uh, talk to the engineer and say, okay, let's put a click track. Now that was a, a, a tricky song because the click track changes. Yes. You know, sometimes it slows down or speeds up, you know, it's like, you know, there's like that part where it yes. slows down. So you have to, you have to make the click do all that. And, uh, and then I would, I would play along and see, you know, does it feel right? Okay, you have to change this. And we would, we would spend maybe three hours just making a click track. Huh. And, uh, and it's funny because when we did the day I recorded it, I didn't have the ending. <laughs> you know, I, had, I, I knew the beginning, I knew the middle, I didn't know how to end it. And so while I was driving to the studio, I'm like, I gotta have an end. <laughs> and, and finally, I, you know, that, it, that sometimes works really well to have that panic. Yes. Of like, I've only got 10 minutes and I have to think of the ending. And o- often that's, you'll get the best things that way. You know. So finally, I thought of the ending. So that one started with the lyrics. Um, a song like, um, let's see, Hello, Nor- Hello North Dakota. That was also came from the lyrics. Uh, the beginning of it, that that's actually the, the like the, the song of North Dakota. Like yes, in, yes. In the United States, every state has a song. Yes, yes. And uh, I, I didn't know it. I had to Google, uh-huh. and uh, and there wasn't there wasn't really a great recording, but you know there was a kind of low fidelity recording, and I could figure it out. And uh, where was the, oh where was the Portland? That was more like guitar riff. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know that's more like just pentatonic scale with a little bit of ninth. That's um, it, it's fu- it's funny like if you listen to Purple Haze by yes. by uh, Jimi Hendrix, Hendrix, 
you know, that da da da. He, he he really emphasizes the ninth a lot, uh -huh. um, which to me is kind of jazzy. Yeah. And uh, it's you know I I never as a kid I I could never know that because I I didn't really know about theory or what yes. intervals are called. But after I went to school, uh -huh. you know I learned uh, the names of intervals, and then you know as my ear got better, I was like, oh that's the ninth. You know that's the you know, a little bit of a jazzy or kind of fusion sound, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it's still pretty simple. But it's uh, you know that song has that. Yeah. Um, so that, that that little jazz element. Yes. You know, I mean, I'm sure if you play it for Frank and Ball, he's like, <laughs> that's, that's, that's not real jazz, but you know, for me, it is. You know. It's a little component. Yeah, it's just a little taste. Okay. Yes. Okay. Nella seconda domanda gli abbiamo chiesto quanto è importante saper suonare altri strumenti oltre al proprio. Other instruments. Well, I, I just learned other instruments because I love them. You know, it wasn't like okay, I have to do this because it's, no, no. it's, yes. it's, it's you know it's a medicine. You know. yes, I, yes. I did it because man, playing drums is so much fun. And uh, I, I played drums for a long time when when I was a kid. You know, playing sort of because I, I joined I would join a band. Mm -hmm. So when I, was, when I was 11, I joined a band, and then I was like, you know, can I play your drums? You know, and just, and then show me how to do that. So like, my I've had some of the best drum teachers in the world, like Scott Travis, you know, Pat Torpy, Thomas Lang. You know, all, yeah. I always ask them, you know, can you show me something? And uh, but also, you know, rhythm. Every instrument should have rhythm. Yes. So when I when I'm playing guitar, if I, you know, that's that song I just sang about. You, you could go down. Yeah, that's, the, that's the rhythm of it. You know, and sometimes that's the problem with, um, especially in, in like shred guitar, mm -hmm. is that the, um, you know, the drums and bass are keeping the rhythm, and the guitar is just sort of flying over the top somewhere, okay. and which can be cool. As, I mean, flying is good if, as long as you have good landing. Yes. So you go, and you have a good landing, that's cool. But if you go, then that, that's not so good. So, um, and then, well, it's funny, for, for this album, like, drums, they physically demanding. You know, because I, I got skinny arms, you know, I'm, I'm not a strong person. So, like, drums, I mean, you know, really had to work physically. And then, Bass is much more demanding mentally. Yes. Um, it, it depends on the style of music. Like if you're playing metal bass, you know, just going da, 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 maybe that's more physical. Yes. But like a song like Argument About Pi or, or Meaningful, there's a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. And so you know, it's a, a lot more trying to follow the, the, the chord changes and play mm -hmm. a, a melody. And uh, it's, it's almost like a guitar solo, but it's just low. You know? <laughs> just more ri yeah. rhythmical. Yeah. And, uh, and just sometimes, I remember the, the producer really helped me. Huh. Because I, I hadn't played bass in a while. And you know, again, I had, the, the technique's not a problem. It's, it's more like, like, what's the part? You know, what, what kind of uh, bass riff will fit with the guitar? Because in metal, everything's the same. If you're playing a Black Sabbath song, yes. the guitar, you know, the, the bass, so everything is the same. Yes, sir. But if you're playing like funk yes. or or pop or other styles, you know, the guitar's doing, it was with song like, um, well, argument about pie, you know, is the guitar. And the bass, yes. the guitar is just much more simple. Yes, yes. L'ultima domanda invece era sulla sua routine di studio quotidiana. I would say um, usually blues, because yeah. um, I, I I love the the sound of, of vibrato and bending, 
And also, to, to me, blues is like a doorway in, into into jazz. Yes. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's just it's jazz with one four five. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, and you know, maybe if you want to get tricky, add the six and the two. You know, but um, yeah, that's uh, to, to me, to me, it's really sad. It's like you know, because from, from rock, well, sometimes you don't have any changes. Mm-hmm. Or they're so simple. You have like yes. A minor F over and over again, and uh, so to have like you know a you know a, a dominant seventh chord yes. for your one and your four and your five, it's um, there's a, a lot more harmonically, and to, to to make that to make that happen where you you know you're playing your one chord you know boom 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 down down to the four and do do and it's um it's funny from playing blues it of course you know you have to teach your fingers yes and you have to teach your eyes you know to know where to put the fingers but most such a big part of it is Training, like, what is a blues melody? You know, in that you can you sing it? You yes. know, if you have a kazoo, you know, can you play the blues on, yes, on yes. a kazoo? And I, I didn't expect that. That was a surprise. But that's the part that feels so good. Like, you know, in, inside of me is that is that melody, and it's almost like one big melody that's just one melody. Okay. And I, I mean, I guess you could have minor blues. Maybe it's a different one. But. Um, Having and, and then whenever you play a blues, you just you just pull out of that melody. So uh, you know, so much of it is is in the ear, and you know, you can almost practice without the guitar. You know, I know where that is. It's a, I can see the the fretboard in my yes, head. Yes, yes. Play that. So it's a, if if you practice and you do air guitar. Mm-hmm. You can tell, like, do I really know, you know, How where sounds, I am in yeah. the air? You know, and uh, that, that's a good test of your knowledge. Yes. You know, it's also great on stage because, it, like, if your monitor is not good, you can't hear yourself. Yes, you, you still know in your head. Mm-hmm. So you practice uh, almost uh, in some way of uh, um, ear training. Well, I mean, in a way, all all practice should be ear training. You know, yes, yes. You know, if you're not listening, yes, yes, what's, what's the point? You know, 